Join us for our latest hobby tutorial on the brand new Citadel tent set and how to use these tents with your existing paints. Spiking bits. All right, welcome back hobby maniacs. Rob Bear here on a fantastic hobby hump day. Now this paint set came out, I guess it's a tent set uh, last week and it's, um, you know, it's really interesting. Like I didn't really know what to make of it. Um, and uh, hopefully we all learned a little bit from uh, this video that I'm about to record here because these are a curious product to be quite honest. Um, it's basically a good way to change the tonality of your particular paints. Now remember, all the acrylic paints out there is basically a pigment and a binder. And the binder is usually a majority of water. So when we buy paint, we're paying for majority of water. Sweet. <laughs> but that's the name of the game, unfortunately. And as we know, paint is one of the most expensive substances on the face of the earth next to like a uh, printer cartridge thing, I suppose, or booze probably booze too. Uh, but so we're going to break it down the best we can with the limited know-how and technology, or I guess documentation we have uh, in both this set, which is just basically these pictures and the article slash PDF download from Games Workshop site. Now they may put out a video tutorial here in the near future on, on how exactly to use this stuff and some really cool techniques because, well, to be quite honest, we're not the heavy metal team and we're not them. So we just have to go by what they've told us up to this point. And I'm trying to show you if this set is worth your hobby dollars or not. So let's get right to it. Okay, so I have some unwilling, willing test subjects here. You might remember these guys from the technical paints tutorial we did, I guess, earlier this summer. This was the uh, metallics they came out with, and then of course, of course, the new uh, uh, gloss uh, versions of red. Was it Waywatcher? Was the green, and then there was like a blue. I forget some Eldar. Eldar name there, but regardless, so these guys have, uh, you know, they've been kicking it here in the studio and we're going to grab our Windsor Newton Series 7 because we did a, a paint comparison of these brushes recently and somebody was like, hey, Robbie B, you should, uh, you should do an update of how these, uh, how these brushes are hanging in there. Well, here's your, here's your answer. About two months later, I know the video just came out, but it was recorded a long time ago. There's the tip right there. So that may give you a good indication of just how well these paints Oh, these paintbrushes are, are are holding up. So there's our base coat for red, nice solid Mephiston red. It's uh, it's pretty neutral. I guess it's more of a more of a brown red than anything. Uh, if I was gonna highlight this, I would add some yellow to it, being as though it's not a, a brown. So I'm gonna grab the Sanguinius tint here, which I have no idea how it's even gonna work. So it almost looks like the airbrush paint or the gloss version of their paint. It looks very bright and pigmented for sure, almost like a nail polish. Very interesting stuff here. So again, don't know how to use this paint, but I'm just gonna kind of mix it in with some of this Mephiston over here off camera and it's definitely changing it. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Again, I'm just mixing some of this in to try to change the tone of the uh, of the paint itself, which definitely appears like I have. So let's paint this knee pad. All right. Well, I mean, it's brighter. Let's try this red. Over the gray, it's, uh, you can definitely tell there that knee pad on the right is definitely brighter. Um, for sure. But I'm not really seeing anything super crazy, crazy difference that I can tell, I mean, I would just mix kind of paints together, I feel like at this point. Now it does look like it's stained my brush. I'm not sure if that's a thing or not. Might be. Maybe that's why we're not supposed to use, we're supposed to use these little spatula thingies and not brushes because, like I said, pigmented things like this can be a problem and that's why I was wearing gloves. Now I'm not sure, it does appear that I have stained my brush. My sable hairs are gonna be very angry. Oh well, that is how it goes. It's come off for the most part, but 
that's shampoo, etc., etc., there was definitely some staining there. So let's get back to the model here and be a little bit, bit more careful. Again, not a lot of documentation provided as of right now. There is no video from Games Workshop on how to use these paints. So as far as the red goes, I can't really tell much difference um, in the, the, the knee pads right there, if you know what I mean. So let's try to, let's pick a different color maybe. Um, let's go with some yellow here. Like yellow seems like it's always good, right? So we've got, this is probably Rogel Dorn or something crazy like that. And let's open this up, take a look. Okay, so it's a nice bright yellow. Again, almost like a nail polish. Very, very striking. Um, let's go with this Uriel yellow right here. Not sure what to expect out of this. This and we're gonna paint on to get a baseline for uh, the model. So we'll just go here on his, uh, on his hands. Of course, yellow being a light color probably should require multiple coats to do, but we're just getting in here Um, just laying down a base coat here now this actually looks a lot more like flash kits yellow the, the brighter yellow from games workshop I can't exactly oh, I did it with my brush again Ugh, The worst okay, we got it off. All right, so let's get it out of the pot here I'll Get some off-camera and then we're gonna add in a little bit of this tint this Rogel Dorn tint again it's very it's almost like a bad moon yellow if you remember that color from back in the day definitely what it looks like and we're gonna paint that on see how concentrated it is here so obviously it is brighter which was to be expected and I mean, it just seems like a different color, I'm afraid. I'm not really seeing, I mean, it's cool because you can have basically these, what, 10 different colors here, and you can change any of your base colors to, you know, a different tint or a different shade. But as far as it's like super effectiveness, I mean, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really seeing it here, folks. Like, all right, well, let's try, I wanted to mess around with this, this white, uh, the, the con in here. So let's grab this Gene Stealer purple. Let's see what we can do with this bad boy. Now this is already like almost a very a very bright purple. It's not like a warlock purple, right? So this is very bright in and of itself. So we're gonna add some of that white to it to make it almost like a pastel. And see where that gets us because this is this is gonna be really interesting because sometimes you want a really stark now I gotta shake this up this is actually almost it looks like it's tried out actually oh that's embarrassing sorry games workshop I tried but your white is for the most part dried out I might be able to salvage some of this and again, I'm mixing it. It's just looking like it's becoming a little bit pastel of a version of the initial paint, which you can see right there. I mean, it's got a nice tone to it. Um, this isn't a color, obviously, that Games Workshop is ever gonna sell, something like this. Um, so I think in that regard, it's really good, but you gotta, yeah, you know, I'm, now I'm questioning myself like, hey, if I just added white to this paint, would that would that do it? So I don't know. I <laughs> I'm kind of torn here, like how this all works, because I'm not I'm not seeing it. I mean, in practicality, I uh, I see how it would be a good idea to buy these to mix them in with your current paints, so you wouldn't have to buy new paints. But you know, I feel like how useful is that like I guess I guess if you're on a budget it's it's good um but I'm just not I mean they, they don't they seem brighter but they don't seem they don't seem bright enough that I can't find an alternative out there in a different range and I guess that's kind of why Games Workshop did this is because you know they're like hey you can kind of make any color out of our color but let's be honest we know there's other paint companies out there with tons of other different colors i mean so they're not the only the only player in the market here on the on the paint scene and 
I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, let's try, let's try black. Cause they're like, they seem to be all about this black, like being able to mix like different tints with that. Um, so let's, let's try that. Let's try this. Let's mix in this purple here to some black and see what kind of tonal change we can make. I just want to try one more thing. Now, obviously that's a very striking blue. Um, it's almost like a, like a very glossy kind of type deal. I mean, black is black. It's, it shouldn't take much to change it. I think this is Conrad Kerr's. So add this in and I am not really seeing any difference in this little pile of paint here, but let's try it. So here is the black with about 50-50 mix of Conrad Kerr's and I'm really not seeing anything here now. Now there it is, but you know, you really gotta mix it in Okay, there, I see that. Uh, that is definitely a tonal change. And that looks good. Like, that's a different, that's a different black for sure. Um, I feel like it's not something, again, that Games Workshop is going to sell. And it's cool to have that flexibility to want to wanna mix something up. But again, I, I don't know if this is something for the everyday hobbyist. I, I don't feel that it is. So, oh, and one way to change paints that I wanted to show you guys uh, that I almost forgot about was mixing it with metal because it seems like that would be something very useful. So I don't have the GW base metal so I'm grabbing some uh, plate mill metal from Army Painter which should be pretty spot on for what we want to do. Now most metal paints start with just what they call a mithril pigment from what I understand. and I imagine a lot of you out there will be painting Thousand Suns so let's try some sanguineous tint into this thing this bad boy right here real quick and just mixing in some tint into this now you could maybe do the same thing with a clear from forge world um or tamia whatever just spray it metal and then or uh yeah spray it metal and hit it with a red clear or something and, and it would uh it would be very similar. Now that isn't quite that red, so I think we need to add more. Again, this is all trial, trial and error, not really knowing how this product huh, works per se, but I feel like we're, we're, we're getting somewhere with this. I'm gonna add in a little bit more. Again, not using my brush because we, well, we found out that that, uh, that likes to stain bristles right off the bat if it's not mixed with something else, i.e. watered down, so to speak. So there's a nice, Kind of starting to be a metallic thousand sun color, as best I could tell there. Now it is a little pastel-y, but that kind of gives you the idea there. So let's grab our brush and get in here and hit this tabard with it and see how it looks. Ooh, that's that's different. So that is definitely a um, a not mithril and a not red, and this is probably something you can't exactly take like a red paint and just add it to like a mithril silver. Or something like that and get this similar effect it would almost get matted out but that gives you some possibilities there for basically doing stuff I said you know like hey if you want to do like thousand suns or something like that adding more or less pigment kind of depending on which way you want to go with that the same could be said you know for ultramarines and blue etc etc so that's a neat little trick right there I can really get behind that uh, it almost makes me you know kind of wish the, these were sold separately so if you're like oh thousand suns all right let me pick up that sanguineous red but that's not the case but still this is a, definitely another tool to add to our uh, our hobby toolbox or our hobby arsenal there I don't know I'm torn on these I can't I can't really give you I guess I can't really give you a good opinion. I mean, I can see the pros and I can see the cons, but without like just going by the guide in the White Dwarf and I'm not really able to produce, I mean, I guess I can because you, you saw it here. Here's the tonal changes. It does work, but at the end of the day, do you want to mix your own paints or do you want to just like go down to the store and pick something off the rack that works? And then have your you know your handy dandy recipe book like I do and write all your recipes down so you kind of remember uh, what you painted stuff at so I guess that's really what it's got to come down to so I'm, I'm really I can't give this like a thumbs up or a thumbs down because I see the pros and the cons to every side of the fence here um, but I, I think I think as a as a product if you are actively interested in purchasing this product I think that it, it probably has a use um, in your hobby table or your your hobby arsenal, but I feel like this is not something that everybody is going to want to buy and therefore um, 
you know, it's it's obviously something that that's going to be a little bit of a mystery, kind of like that in between um, between painting techniques and, and the airbrush itself. So as far as that goes, um, I think it's an interesting product. And if you're curious and you feel like your hobby skills are at that level, you might want to check this out. If not, I feel like you can just grab, you know, some different color paints off the shelf and uh and do just fine without this product this uh hobby tint set here so that's it for this one folks obviously please chime in in the comments below and tell us what you think what we're doing wrong or you know how you feel about the issue so we always love hearing from you in the comments deleted scenes bonus content all the interviews and post game wrap-up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. The longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.